Welcome back to Automation Airwaves. I'm your host, Scott Teeple. And we are on episode 11, where we're talking about neglecting process change management. And back again with me is uh, Justin Bishop. So thanks for, for coming yeah, thank back. thank you again. Yeah, absolutely. So let's dive right in. As, as always, we like to define maybe a little bit more about what do we mean uh, by uh, the title of neglecting process change management. So uh, if you could please. Sure, yeah. So um, oftentimes, uh, we, we get into a spot where um, changes within our day-to-day -day business processes are just not being communicated to other business units. So when we talk about business change management or process change management, it, it's really the, uh, the engagement of all the business units to make sure that those process owners are communicating the change up and downstream uh, that way everyone has an understanding of uh, the changes that could impact other business units. Um, it also really requires that we have uh, the business owners, of course, the automation team, of course, um, but, and, and cannot neglect IT in there as well to make sure that we're communicating uh, all, all those changes. And really, you know, through our experience, some of having IT involved is almost one of the most critical. Right. Uh, as businesses, we know do some great communications within departments, right? Especially through down downstream changes or the understanding of process and how it impacts those who are directly impacted, right? right? right. Those communication channels are usually wide open and, and, and live and living. Um, but in other areas, in our use cases, our examples, oh, yeah. uh, we find that it's, it's, the, it's the two to three, the four, the steps down that aren't a direct impact. Um, where you know maybe it was like you know a field that was nobody knew it was being used, yeah, right? Which happens a and lot. it's being used yeah. for something yeah. else, yeah. but nobody knows that you're using that, and then right. somebody comes along and changes that, right? And just normal IT systems, you know, being able to vet through what exactly that's being used for to understand the right. impacts. If you're not communicating, then this really causes a, a, yeah. a big oh, yeah. stink and yeah. a big problem. So, uh, being a critical stall point, not necessarily critical. Um, but definitely one that is going to cause a lot of, of rework, you know, dirty work, right? Uh, a lot of right. uh, uh, useless um, time management over, over the process. Yep. So, no, that's good. So, um, do, do you have an examples or, or an understanding? And, and maybe this one's a little obvious for everyone. If you don't have it, then you know you don't. <laughs> yeah. um, but if, if, you're, if you're in the middle of your automation program, uh, are there evidence or signs that, hey, maybe I'm sitting in this stall, this stall point? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely. So the more obvious one, as you said, if, if we don't have a change management program, then there's, there's this incredible lack of communication <laughs> up and downstream of, of uh, each business unit understanding what the other one is doing. You know, take, take the case of, you know, say maybe the procurement team is responsible for sending uh, a file at the end of every day of all the goods that were purchased and that file goes down to the accounting team so they can do their work. And uh, the accounting team suddenly says, hey, by the way, um, we're going to start doing that process now. We, we found in our ERP system we can capture that data automatically. But they don't tell the procurement team that that's happening. Mm -hmm. So imagine what's going to happen. Well, the procurement team is going to still do that work day in and day out for no reason. Mm -hmm. So we want to definitely avoid that kind of work. Yeah, that's, that's really good. And when, and when we look at how it impacts, say, the automation itself, um, right, is, is the automations are always breaking because there's things that aren't being communicated, right. so there's, the, the updates aren't happening. Could you imagine a contact center uh, not getting updated, uh, that they need to be doing something differently because the process changed yet, right? right? And we're just having constantly been doing Oh, yeah, because we work. like to say, you know, automation can't anticipate process change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think it says, actually says, uh, the, the, in, the, in the actual global IA report, <laughs> it, it calls it out, and it's quite funny that the, the bots or the automations can't sit at the table and say, hey, if you do that, you're going to break me. Correct, exactly. <laughs> right, yeah. right. So there needs to be a voice. There needs to be uh, somebody who yes. is representing them on, on their behalf. Yep. So that's good. So um, can, can you describe for uh, our, our viewers uh, a couple of use cases um, and share our, kind of our experience that we've had with some of our clients? Sure. Um, so, you know, remember back in our, in our beginning days, if you will, <laughs> Um, oftentimes we, we had some processes, uh, a lot of processes that were automated and uh, because we didn't involve IT early or even involve IT at all, they had no idea what we were doing in automation, um, they would make some changes to the underlying uh, code in our ERP system and the automation program itself could not detect 
those uh, underlying code changes because the UI didn't change, the, you know, mm -hmm. the, the user interface didn't change. So imagine that to the average user, nothing changed. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the automation suddenly cannot find mm -hmm. those code changes, and this is where we just this is where we quickly determined that boy, we've got to get IT sitting on that that change process mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. uh, so that we can uh, make sure that these processes don't break because they yeah. would, they would break often, yeah. and IT didn't sh tell us the changes. Yeah, I remember this one specifically. I think even Lee, uh, Lee and I've had some conversations in, in some uh, of these webinars. You know, it was like, hey, Scott, what you know, what's going on with this? Why do we keep? Why does this keep happening? You know, um, and and I think we actually sat down for a couple of days where the bots weren't actually running. Um, because we were trying to figure out what what changed within the the bot itself, right? Uh, and we find out that uh, you know nothing changed within the UI, um, and they and and they didn't decide to tell anybody because nothing changed physically right. on the screen because they had no idea that the automations were sitting there and required right. uh, the deep understanding of what the tags or or the or the objects underneath, right? Right. Um, which was which is quite well, uh, you know, and because you know again because even though we want IT involved they don't own the process. Mm. They really have no insight into that business unit's day-to-day -day process. Um, so, uh, you know, they're not responsible for the SLAs, they're not responsible for the process getting done, they're just responsible for making sure that the architecture is there for the people to get the work done. So how does somebody um, who, who may be sitting here in a, in a similar situation, uh, what can they do to, to really help them you know, kind of, kind of position themselves because obviously they can't just snap their finger and everybody starts oh, communicating. Right, yeah, right? right, right. But what are some small steps that maybe they can do if they find themselves? Well, and I'm sure they, you know, uh, know that they're in this space. <laughs> right. Uh, but, but, but advice that you can give them and how they can navigate through this stall point. Sure. So, uh, I would say I mean, it's been pretty obvious to me um, through the businesses that I've gone out and spoken with that not a lot of businesses have a, a business change program or a process change program. So it really begins by getting all the key stakeholders together and determining what this BCM, this business change management or process change management program is going to look like. Um, it's making sure that not only do we have the stakeholders involved, uh, but it's also, um, did, we, we need to make sure that we have somebody on that team that is really responsible for coordinating all of that change um, and, and reaching out to all the process owners uh, to understand what changes are coming. Um, I would also say that we got to make sure that we uh, were involved in IT early. So IT should really have a, uh, a seat on that business change uh, program so that they can hear the changes that are coming so that they know um, what processes uh, they may be involved with are changes so that they are they're not doing extra work uh, that they may already be feeding this data into the processes that they shouldn't need to be doing anymore uh, but it's also uh, the the team over the BCM team needs to make sure that they're sitting on the IT change management side so important to make sure that they're listening to ch for changes that are coming up yeah. and the BCM team needs to really have a voice uh, on the IT change management to say, uh, if you're making that change, you can't yet because we're going to have to do some regression testing in our automations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is a big one. And, and again, this is, even though we know it, right, we've even seen in our clients if, as we've had these conversations around BCM, when we have a pretty good program in place, we still seem to trip up, right? Oh, when, yeah. when patches are being planned, but not everybody is fully engaged in the understanding or things are kind of being done kind of behind the scenes. And you know, all yeah. of a sudden it's like, hey, we're pushing out a patch. Yeah, it's just a Windows patch. It's like, whoa, oh, oh. <laughs> Hold on. And did, have they really done the yeah. work to understand right. the, what, what underlying changes, right? Whether it's a security or some kind of, you know, extra step that goes into how the, how the bot opens up. Right, so, right. Yeah, that's really good. So we'll really appreciate you, you coming in today. Don't forget to head out to agilifyautomation.com and take the automation maturity assessment. Uh, it's really great information. Again, if you haven't gone out and taken that, uh, please do. Uh, as always, Agilify uh, unleashing human potential through intelligent automation.